Hey guys, and welcome to another home safari at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. My name is Colleen, and I'm here with Alicia and Sir Francis Bacon, our Red River Hog. Now, Alicia and I are trainers for the Cincinnati Zoo's Cat Ambassador Department. You've probably seen our encounters where we run cheetahs at full speed. Pretty awesome stuff, but what people don't realize about the Cat Ambassador Department we have some non-cats. Sir Francis Bacon is one of those. Now, as I mentioned, he's a red river hog, which is a species of a pig that's found in the rainforests of Africa. So unlike the warthog, which we're really familiar with from things like the Lion King, this animal isn't gonna be living in the savannas with lions and cheetahs. They're gonna more so be in the jungles or rainforests of Africa, where you see animals like elephants and gorillas. Now, Sir Francis Bacon has been part of our zoo family since he was born. He was born here at the Cincinnati Zoo, and he was hand raised by our ambassador department to have a pretty unique little life, including getting to take walks around the zoo. So while we unfortunately can't have visitors, we have all of these free and open paths, which means our animals are getting a little bit more walks on these nice days. And this is a really great form of enrichment for our animals. So when we talk about enrichment, a lot of times people just think of a few things, like maybe toys or <laughs> maybe uh, different smells. That's a really popular enrichment, especially among carnivores. But there's actually five different categories of enrichment. Things like toys are gonna be an environmental enrichment. Uh, things like smells are going to be a sensory enrichment. We also know that food, novel food, or fun and interesting treats can be a nutritional enrichment. But this is something of uh, social enrichment today. In addition to getting out and getting to uh, explore and getting a little exercise, he's also getting to see a lot of new animals. And the animals are getting to see him as well, which is going to be really beneficial for both sets of animals. We call this uh, them getting to have interactions with, we call it a heterospecific enrichment. So that means hetero means different, specific means species. So basically two different species are getting to see and interact with one another. So we're taking Sir Francis Bacon down our Africa path where we have a lot of our African animals. This is our African savanna. And you can see Mike, our wildebeest, is checking him out. You can also see a few of the other animals have sort of stopped in their tracks to say, hey, wait, what's that? That's different. This is all going to be really good enrichment for them because they're going to get to be able to explore some species-specific behaviors, meaning they might, if they're a prey animal, stop and be on high alert. They might communicate with one another. Or like you might have heard Mike snort. That was his him saying, hey man, I don't like you. You should maybe back up. And we of course listened to Mike and said, okay, we'll continue our journey. Now Francis being a pig species, he's going to be a social animal. So he loves being around his conspecifics, meaning members of the same species. But here at the zoo, he's, since he was hand raised, he loves being around his keepers and trainers. In the wild, they would be around groups of about five to 20 other Red River Hogs in a group of what's called a sounder, uh, and that would keep them safe. Safety in numbers is a great way that animals stay safe in their environment. But because Francis is at the zoo and he's safe with us, he likes to also think of us as his friends and family. Now what we're seeing is another social species coming together to interact with Sir Francis Bacon. That's our wild dogs, the African painted dogs. These are really, really social animals. They love to hang out, communicate, and hunt as a group. And they are really great at investigating as a group too. See. These are prey animal. This is a prey animal being looked at by predators. But luckily our prey animal, Francis, knows he's safe 
and he is getting lots of snacks, so this is all really positive for him. But we're also seeing a lot of positive interactions from our wild dog pack as well. So that's really fun. Do we have any questions? So I'm gonna kick it back to some of the questions we've had from you guys. Rachel wants to know what a baby Red River hog is called, and they're just called piglets, just like you would think of any domestic pig species. Francis is 11 years old, so it's been a while since he was a piglet. We're coming up on another social species. These uh, meerkats love coming together to investigate what Sir Francis Bacon is. I'm sure they're doing a lot of communicating amongst their group to try to see if this is safe uh, to be around them. A big part of what meerkats do as a group is make sure that their group stays safe by investigating new things. All right, let's see another question. Ooh, Oliver wants to know what those things on Sir Francis Bacon's ears are. Those are his ear tassels. See if we can get a big close up of his ear tassels. Now, they might have a few different uh, functions and I'm not a Red River Hog. I don't know how they could best be used, but they could be used to make him look big or to be able to communicate with other animals. But something that I have seen them also be used for is a great fly slaughter. Between that nice long tail and those long ear tassels, he can swat almost any spot on his back to be able to get away any pesky flies. I also got the question from Ellery that says, why are they called Red River Hogs? There's not a Red River uh, in the jungles of Africa where they live. So we think that the best thing that we can come up with is that bright red color they have, which is actually a pigment on him. You'll see if I give him a pet. Come here, buddy. Oh, let's get some of his redness off on my hands. That's not just dirt, that's actually a pigment. And ha, pigment, get it? But what it does is it acts as like a sunscreen or an insect repellent to help keep him um, and his skin nice and clean and bug free. So that's where the red part of Red River Hog comes from. And then they usually have a stripe running down their back. Maybe that looks like a river, perhaps. That's sort of the best explanation of why Red River Hog has come up. Um, but that's how they get their name. So those are all really, really great questions. Uh, another question we just got asked is, is Pumbaa a Red River Hog? Pumbaa was a warthog. And there are some warthog species, a very, very select few that sort of have that reddish color. Most warthogs, however, are gonna be gray in color. So we think that maybe Disney thought, hey, this is a much prettier pig species. We're gonna use that red color instead because who doesn't think that Francis is pretty? They're known as the prettiest in the pig family because of that bright orange or red color and because they have those ornate or very pretty white uh, markings, not only along their back, but also along their face as well. Now we have land pig meets water pig. We are here at the hippo exhibit. We have Fiona coming over to see See what's going on. This is really great enrichment as well. I'm gonna take another question as we get Fiona swimming over. Piper wants to know. Piper wants to know what the difference between a pig and a hog are. Honestly, those used are those words are used really interchangeably, uh, and it just depends on species. I'm gonna move this. So sometimes being a prey animal, certain things can be very scary because they're always on high alert. They have to, as an adaptation, be really aware of their environment and especially very aware of things that change very suddenly. So I don't know if anybody noticed, but Sir Francis Bacon was a little nervous to come from the sunny area into the shady area of the Hippo Cove. And that's probably just because that difference Differences are usually a warning to animals. So he's like, I prefer the sun. I don't really like change and that's all right. So what we have here 
is one of the behaviors that Sir Francis Bacon knows. You see, pigs are very, very smart animals. And we can train them to do all sorts of fun things. We've learned from other home safaris that training is really useful in the care and management that we give to our animals every day. But it's also really fun to be able to teach them things that can help with our educational messaging and conservation messaging. And so that's what Francis is doing here. You see, we have this recycling bin. And then we have these blocks. These blocks in our encounter are supposed to mimic cell phones. So we're showing how easy it is to recycle your old cell phones. It's so easy that even our pig can be trained to do it. And that messaging is really important, especially to species like Sir Francis Bacon and the Red River Hogs. You see, Red River Hogs, gorillas, and some species of elephants are found in the rainforests of Africa. And that area is where a very important mineral is mined. That mineral is called coltan. And coltan is mined from those areas to be able to make electronics like cell phones that we use every day. Now we know that most resources are not unlimited. And so when we recycle, we keep them from being mined, which means that we keep the environments where Red River hogs, gorillas, and elephants live safe we keep their natural habitat and natural resources intact. And we can do that just by recycling our old cell phones whenever we do an upgrade or whenever we get a screen break or something where we need to replace our cell phone. And just like with all of the training you've seen on our home safaris, you'll see that every time Francis is asked to do a behavior, he gets some of his favorite snacks. He's an herbivore, which means he eats mostly fruits and vegetables. They're actually pretty uh, herbivorous, but they can also eat some carrion or worms or insects, so they're technically an omnivore. But his favorite snacks are things like fruits and veggies, uh, sweet potatoes and apple I think is what he's getting today, probably really similar to the fruit salads or veggie mixes that you get at home with your dinner. Uh, those are Francis's favorite and what he's getting as a training snack today. <laughs> Nadia, Nadia wants to know if he takes a bath. And that's a really good question that brings me to uh, something that you guys can follow up on. Uh, Red River hogs aren't really known to be the best of swimmers. It's really hard for a body like that to <laughs> swim unless you're like Fiona who's specially adapted to it, but we know that they don't even swim, they just sort of bounce around in the water. So what Francis does to keep clean is they wallow. So they like to sit in shallow mud pits. And what happens is they coat themselves in mud, which is the opposite of how we get clean. But what that does is it helps to keep them cool. It helps to keep buggies off of them, like parasites or gnats or other insects. And it's really, really good for them to be able to uh, stay clean and safe in their natural environments. So that's, I think, the home safari follow-up activity of the day, which is to have a printout of Sir Francis Bacon, make your own mud paint, and give your own version of Sir Francis Bacon a mud bath with arts and crafts, which sounds really fun. All right, Sophie wants to know how old is he and how big will he get? Sir Francis Bacon is about 11 years old and he's as big as he'll ever get weighing in at about 150 pounds, but he is not the biggest Red River Hog. He uh, would have, if a sometimes male Red River Hogs can get as big as 250 pounds is pretty big. Looks like, is that Fiona or BB? One of them's checking them out. It's a lot of fun and rich. Oh, it's Fiona and BB checking them out. Who is his favorite keeper? We have that question. I think that he likes anybody that gives him snacks, to be honest. He has four primary keepers here at the Sensei Zoo. Myself, Alicia, and our two co-workers, Linda and Andy, and I think he loves us all equally. At least I like to think so. But I think today Alicia's the favorite because she has, she has the apple bits. I mean, I can't blame awesome. him. 
All right, well, we are gonna continue our walk here. Uh, maybe meet a few other critters. Say hi to Fiona one more time. And I wanna take this opportunity before we sign off of Facebook Live to thank you guys so much for tuning in. It means so much to our zoo community for you guys to be supporting us and to be watching everything that we do with our animals. We wouldn't be able to do what we're doing with our animals if it wasn't for the support of our members and our visitors and the people that love and care about our zoo. Uh, and that goes for every day of the week, but especially during this quarantine time. So we really appreciate everybody's love and support. And especially if anybody does make donations or can make donations, that's helping our zoo community tremendously. These animals still eat every day. We still come in to care for them every day. And any donation, even if it's small, really helps in a big way to make sure that we are able to do our jobs for these animals and make sure that they're having happy and healthy lives, just like we hope all of you are at home as well. Stay safe, sane, and sanitized at home. And thank you so much for tuning in to our home safari.